Hello, my name is Mark Pimitel. I'm one of the CAM application specialists here at Hawker Systems. And in this video, we'll be talking about what is feature-based CAM. So feature-based CAM is what we describe SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS as. It is a software where we start from the feature rather than the operation. So to see how that works, let's take a look at this part I have on screen here. So as a general practice, the programmer would take a look at the part, what features are on there, take a look at the size of the holes, take a look at the size of the pockets, and determine what tooling they'd like to use, what operations they need to apply to machine those features. That same workflow is what's replicated inside of a feature-based CAM software. So let's start programming this part and see how that works. If I go to my feature tree, you'll see that I've already defined what machine, what material, and how I'm gonna locate this, what my work offset is on this part. So by minimum, I just need to put that on there, but once we start working with CAMWorks, feature-based CAM, the first part of feature-based CAM is automatic feature recognition. We're going to get it to find those features by clicking on this icon here, and it analyzes that solid to see what features are on there that we like to machine. It doesn't necessarily have to be an original SOLIDWORKS part. It could be a translated part file. It's really just looking at the volume of that solid to see what cavities, what pockets, what holes there are on the part. If you take a look at my feature tree, it has found all the features on both sides of the part, side one, side two, and you'll see uh, that they have different types of features on there. So each feature type will call for different types of operations. You'll see those operations listed in the square brackets to the right. That's the name of what we call the operational strategy. It's a list of operations that will be applied to that specific type of feature once I click on generate operation plan. It determines those operational strategies, again, from our internal database. So if it is a certain type of pocket, it adds certain operations. And now that we're on the operations tree, you see those operations listed. And in square brackets to the right of it again is the tool that got selected. So the machine that we're on, the material that we're machining, will load a certain type of tool based off, again, the geometry of the feature. And the feeds and speeds used in those operations will be determined from the material that we're machining. So all that automated workflow is actually following the same sort of thought processes that the programmer would have. If it's a pocket, I want to rough, rest rough, and finish it. If it's aluminum, then I'll use certain tooling, certain feeds and speeds. So that same sort of workflow is being replicated through this process. That process of determining the tools and the operations, we call that intelligence-based machining. So that's the second part of feature-based CAM. The first part being the automatic feature recognition. Once we found what features we have, we find out what operations we're going to add. If everything looks good, I can click on generate toolpath. And then from here, the part is fully programmed. Now that simple workflow is based off of the fact that everything's already loaded in the software. That knowledge is already within the tech DB or what we call the technology database. So let's take a look at what happens behind the scenes. So if I click on a technology database, what we'll see here is a lot of different windows here to control different things that the software will do for you. But specifically the feature-based CAM aspect of everything is contained in features and operations. What happens on this window here is the same sort of workflow that the programmer would have. First, they would take a look at what features are on the part. So let's take a look at one of the features. We'll take a look at the circular pocket on my part. Then it determines if it is a circular pocket, what operations do we want to add? And in this case, I have defaulted what we saw before, the rough, rest rough, and finish. Once it determines the type of feature and the operations, then it looks a little deeper at what type of pocket we're looking at. Is it a blind pocket or a through pocket? If it's a blind pocket, does it have a corner rad? What material is the stock made out of? If this was a Milton machine, is it on the main or the sub? What's the size of that pocket? What's the depth of that pocket? All that feature criteria, again, you can see here is listed. So the various scenarios, the various types of pockets that you encounter, the software will know, know what to do with it. So let's take a look at one of the pockets I have on my part, a through circular pocket. Once we determine what type, we can go down to operations. And this is where that intelligence-based machining comes into play. It is a through circular pocket of a certain size and certain depth. So it'll add a roughing operation and a contouring operation or finishing operation. That fully machines the part. How it determines what tool, 
Well, in this case, because it's a circular pocket, it's looking at the diameter of that pocket. What's the size of that diameter of that pocket? And then it looks at what tool could fit inside of that pocket, but still have some step over. When it comes to other types of pockets, we have various criteria that is in this menu. The depth of the pocket is read right from the feature definition. Everything else is on the operation side. So to see how the operation parameters works, to see how we can modify this on our own, I'm going to add a deburring operation to this through pocket. I'm assuming that this through pocket is mating with other components. I'm going to put a little bit of a deburr on that edge. And this speaks to the fact that this is not an AI based system. This is not a black box. There is no large language models that this is based off of. This is fully under your control. It is basically a parameter based matrix. We can basically just say, I'd like to do it this way, plug it in here, and then going forward, it'll apply that every time it finds this particular set of criteria. So let me add a new operation here. I'll just click on new. I'll add a contour mill operation. I'll use a countersunk tool and I'll specifically call out the tool as my quarter inch 90 degree. I'll go into the operation parameters and again, very parameter based. This is the same workflow we would see in the operations inside of the CAMPAR file. So I'll just scroll right down to chamfer machining and I'll just turn that on and then I'll just leave the settings as is. The default settings are usually ready to go. So now I've added a new operation. So the intelligence based machining has a new way of programming that part. If we go back to our part file, I'll once again click on generate operation plan and I'll just regenerate everything so it takes a fresh look at my circular pockets. Generate toolpath, we'll do a simulation. And if we take a look at my part, it has that chamfered edge. That is how the intelligence-based machining works. That is how the feature-based CAM works. It understands that every time I see a through circular pocket, I like to add that deburred edge. That can be done in the operations or it can be done in the tech DB. If I wanted to replicate the same thing, everything I have done here, I could always go back to my feature tree. And because this is a feature-based CAM, I would right-click on one of my features and I can save that operation back to the tech DB. That way, as I go along, as I make changes, I can save that back and use that as the automation for the future parts. Again, it's not a black box. It's not based on anything other than your own input. And in terms of updating the TechDB, customizing it yourself, it's not a long process. It's basically as you go along, or if you already know what you want to do, you go into the TechDB and you plug in the parameters. Any questions on this or anything else? give us a call at the phone number found on our website and stay tuned to the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.